Um, it is my pleasure to present to you uh, today's topic, uh, which is data fabric and data mesh. Uh, let me quickly switch to the agenda slide. Um, I will start with presenting today's challenges uh, regarding data itself. And uh, then I will try to explain uh, the context of data fabric uh, based on these challenges. Um, I will also move to the principles and purpose of data fabric on its own uh, and present uh, to you uh, the main key components of architecture for data fabric. Um, we will need to also distinguish uh, from data architecture perspective what the key components are. And uh, in a nutshell, I will try to explain the details behind uh, the key components, maybe not all, but the ones that uh, after this presentation, there will be a buzzword that uh, the audience can take uh, with them after. Um, and then um, just at the end of the presentation, I will also need, like to introduce the concept of data mesh as those two, two terms, they come very often together and uh, um, I would like to just also show uh, the key uh, the key changes uh, between uh, data fabric and data mesh uh, in this in this perspective. Um, so let's start. Um, maybe we can start with the main challenges of today's data. Um, the main ch challenges that each a lot of big corporations, especially big corporations and companies face is that the data is located in multiple on-premises and cloud locations. Um, the data is not only structured, but nowadays we have the majority of unstructured data and uh, we are dealing with a lot of different data types. Also the data, it comes from different platform landscapes. So it's, it's very often uh, not associated with the one platform. Um, in, ma in major part, I will show it in a subsequent graph, we are talking about uh, multiple landscapes. Um, and as we know, the data is maintained on, um, on different file systems, uh, different databases and software as a service applications. And all of that needs to be ingested and made available uh, to a single corporate user. Um, as everyone is connected to the internet nowadays, every platform has actually become um, a single source of data as well. Um, and uh, where does all that lead? Well, uh, first of all, we are talking about um, it's hard to maximize the value of data in such, in such circumstances. Uh, it has become a very complex problem. And uh, as data is growing now exponentially, these problems are actually multiplying. Um, next thing uh, is the lack of comprehensive data access and use for a typical user, a standard user in a company. And at the same time, we are talking about lack of availability of data to produce useful predictions. Um, and all of that leads to actually lower productivity um, in a standard corporation or company alone. Um, here is a quick chart um, that actually shows us how organizations embrace multi-cloud. And we can see that the majority of companies, 89% um, this data is uh, from last year, uh, actually utilize multi-cloud. There are very isolated cases. We are talking about a single public or a single private um, infrastructure setup. Um, so it, uh, it, it just simply means that uh, all the problems and challenges that I have explained on the previous slide are, are very valid. Um, now, according to Gartner, um, Gartner claims that there is a solution that is actually capable of enabling companies with an advanced, flexible, and reusable data management across all environments. And this is where data fabric comes to play. Um, also the term that it has been introduced by Gartner is that data fabric we can see as an architecture design um, that is presented as an integration and orchestration layer that is built on top of everything that a single corporation or company already has. Um, so um, it is nothing that will uh, actually change dramatically uh, the current setup or infrastructure, but it's an additional layer that we introduce uh, to the existing uh, existing components. 
uh, and data sources. And the data sources, we can imagine what they are. So we are talking about relational uh, databases, uh, data warehouses, but also big data sources, uh, such as data lakes, uh, now very commonly used. Um, data marts, of course, but also all the data that comes from Internet of Things. Um, such as mobile applications. Uh, we're talking about data that comes from the legacy systems and also any other. So anything that we can imagine um, in a single standard corporation, uh, what data they can have. Um, according to Gartner also, um, a data fabric implementation, so a deployment utilizing data fabric uh, is one of the top technology trends these days. And it has been predicted uh, two years ago that by 2024, by this year, um, the data fabric deployments will increase the efficiency of, um, of any data um, related uh, activities in a single company, uh, but at the same time, uh, keeping any human driven data management tasks. So that sounds promising and interesting. Um, Let's uh, look at this uh, slide. Um, what I wanted to show here is uh, the distinguishment between what the data fabric uh, is and what it actually doesn't do. So um, first of all, um, when we talk about data fabric, uh, there's no need to centralize data. Uh, we are simply talking about putting things in order where, where the data already resides. There is also no replacing or rebuilding current infrastructures. Um, instead, uh, there are machine learning and AI-enabled uh, components that give us uh, the power of abstraction layer on top of what is actually already in the underlying data sources. There is also no need to duplicate the data. So um, there is enablement, enablement of various users access and manage. Uh, information they already have without duplication. Um, and uh, what else? Um, we are not talking about uh, single software, but um, again, it's some kind of um, software design approach uh, that we enable on the current infrastructures. Uh, what is the purpose of Data Fabric? Um, the main purpose is to provide a unified view for all the enterprise data, some kind of unification. And there's already a term for that that is uh, very often used with Data Fabric, which is data virtualization. Um, and how we can understand that? Um, it's some, sa some sort of unification of disparate data systems. Um, it's a way of embedding data governance. Um, on all the data that comes from everything a single corporation or a company has. Uh, it is also a way of strengthening security and privacy measures, uh, but at the same time, being able to provide more data accessible to business users um, and uh, also uh, with guarantee that this data will be accurate. Um, in, in the sense of data fabric, we are talking about data integration um, that allow for simply more holistic and data-centric decision-making. Data fabric architecture. Um, let's start with, uh, with the left side. Uh, uh, so the first uh, and foremost will be the sources that we have just, uh, we have just described. Um, data that comes from data warehouses, any structured uh, data systems, but also big data, uh, data from data lakes, uh, from Internet of Things devices, from mobile apps, um, but also websites and social media. Uh, but also we are talking about data that are simply stored in files, XML files, flat files, any other. Uh, key component, data fabric, uh, we can we can view it as a data fabric pipeline uh, because it inside we can actually um, distinguish four key components um, that I will describe in more detail on subsequent slide. Uh, but the most important part is that um, the, it is all embedded with AI and machine learning capabilities um, to allow for very active 
adaptive use of data for building up building metadata based on that, um, for using orchestration and data ops principles, and uh, recommendation engines. I will um, discuss more details on the subsequent style slides. Uh, and all of that, um, as an end result, we can imagine that uh, here we there's also no need to talk about a single software or one tool because there will also be a pipeline of different tools and it all depends on the specific needs and uh, requirements uh, of the business users, the end users. Uh, but the, the, the key information that is produced as part of data fabric can come in different forms. So it can be BI tools, uh, different reporting tools. Um, it can be different ways of querying data with data science principles. Um, data can be also um, seen through different mobile applications. And six fund fundamental components. Um, so I divided into three groups. Um, first of all, we start with data discovery. So here, uh, we are talking about a surface of new opportunities to integrate data from disparate data sources. Uh, for example, um, a company would like to find new ways to connect data that is on one hand available in a supply chain data mart, but also in a customer relationship management data system um, to enable some new opportunities for product offers to clients or ways to improve customer satisfaction. Um, another key component is the data ingestion layer. So this is where um, it begins for the data clouds uh, to, to come together. Uh, this is where different connections are established between structured and also unstructured data or even semi-structured data. Um, now the second group, uh, data processing. Uh, we can call it the heart of, of data fabric. And this is where the data is refined. Um, to ensure that only relevant data is available to the end consumer. Um, data orchestration, um, these come together. Um, this is the critical layer for data fabric and it conducts some of the most important jobs for, uh, for the data fabric. Um, so it transforms, integrates, cleans the data. Uh, we can view it a little bit like ETL um, and makes it usable for teams across the business. And uh, two more, um, data access. Uh, so this is as, like as, as an end result, um, it allows for the consumption of end data and, and it also ensures that um, the, right, the right data is delivered to the right users. So there are right permissions and security layers established um, that comply with different government regulations. Uh, in addition, this layer also helps to surface relevant data through the use of dashboards and other data visualization tools. Um, and of course, all of that leads to a very accurate uh, data management process. Uh, we can say it's streamlined, we can say it's centralized, and we can say that due to data, data fabric, we receive um, data accuracy. Um, key characteristics of data fabric. Um, first of all, uh, we can we can see it as a single point of access to data, so a single point of truth uh, for multiple source systems, and uh, this is uh, in much uh, in much detail uh, established through prepackaged connectors and components. Um, Self-service data consumption. Uh, which means that uh, the end user will have a lot of flexibility in terms of granting, being granted access to the right data components. And it can be done with self-service, so it also provides um, a nice layer of interaction. Um, supporting different data types and use cases, uh, which means that regardless of what data was actually ingested uh, with the use of data fabric, in the end, uh, it will all be combined in, in a unified way. Um, so data from structured, unstructured, semi-structured, real-time, or even generated in batches uh, will be available in, in the final uh, view or platform. 
Um, and this is very much driven by metadata. Um, so um, there's a lot of learning about the data itself through data fabric. Um, there's a lot of recognition of patterns between data. There's a lot of mapping uh, data and performing continuous analysis. And uh, of course, one of the key characteristics is the use, is the extensive use of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, and some, some examples is uh, providing recommendations or discovering patterns uh, between data items in a data catalog. It's the automation of process of mapping existing business terms to new inputs, uh, which can uh, happen on an ongoing basis, and also establishing relationships between um, the different data components coming from different data source. Um, Another key characteristic is that it's compatible with different deployment setups. And that is, I think, a real advantage that with whatever architecture setup the company comes in, they don't really need to change it. Um, they simply integrate it with the data fabric layer that is based, placed on top of it. Uh, so the deployment setups can be really varied and uh, it can include on-premise, cloud, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud and edge platforms, and then many, many other. Um, another key characteristic is the infrastructure resilience, uh, which means that um, it separates the data management activity from the specific technologies and that is strictly related with, uh, with the previous uh, point. API support allows for sharing data with internal and external users via APIs. Um, this also allows for very much flexibility and also it may um, give us uh, a chance to, for example, uh, extract some of, uh, some of the data specific domain, domain specific data that we want to share with just a group of um, other team members or other users. And we can all utilize that with the API support. Um, now a little bit more details about the key components of, uh, of data fabric. I will start with orchestration and data ops. Um, this is a critical layer and it is very much responsible for uh, providing the right transformation, um, integration, cleaning data from different sources. This is where the unified view um, can be established and uh, make the data usable. Uh, for a lot of different teams in the company, all depending on the context and all depending on the types of queries they would like to run on the data. Um, it follows data ops principles. Maybe, maybe the term is quite new because uh, a lot of us know the DevOps term. And the data ops principle is, uh, is a methodology that actually ties together uh, data engineering, data analytics, and the DevOps uh, principles. Um, another key component in detail is uh, data and metadata. So these two terms are, we can say, extensively used by Data Fabric when we talk about Data Fabric. Um, data, of course, the heart and soul of the Data uh, Fabric architecture um, with all forms, types, and uh, coming from many disjointed systems. And then the metadata, so the information about the data itself, so the details um, around it, um, providing the structured reference and helping us sort, identify attributes uh, of information it provides. Um, we can also uh, combine it into three different parts. Um, structural metadata, when we talk about establishing relationships among different parts of data, uh, when, we, when we actually provide groupings of different attributes, uh, which are theme specific, and then we can look at the relationships between them. Um, there's a descriptive metadata component, uh, which uh, provides more context around uh, the specific attributes themselves. And uh, there's also the administrative metadata, uh, which we can uh, which we can say that it gives us some additional technical elements uh, regarding preservation or rights and how it can be used to facilitate the management of systems. Uh, another key component uh, of data fabric is uh, effective data catalog. Um, is a, we can actually say it's a starting point in any data fabric design. 
And uh, the data organized is with profiling, tagging, uh, different way of classifications and uh, mapping to business definition. Um, it is deployed at scale and uh, we can say that it spans a lot of data sources and stores both sensitive and personal data as well. Um, with data fab fabric and data cataloging, cataloging uh, we can say that they, the, the data is managed in a privacy aware matter, um, which is suitable for, for any user. Um, and it is automated metadata discovery and ingestion. Uh, we can view it as new data source connected to data catalog and through AI algorithms, um, it gives us the possibility to reuse the knowledge of existing data sources um, and uh, provide uh, the right context to anything that is being um, connected as well. Uh, knowledge graph, um, this in this context, we, can, we are talking about a semantic network um, that also collects the metadata, for example, different objects, events, situation, and, and concepts. Uh, and they can be illustrated graphically uh, with the right relationships between them. Uh, such information is stored in a graph database and uh, it is visualized as a graph structure. Um, and I think, uh, because it's, it's, it's mapped in a graphical way, uh, it provides a lot of um, visual perspective and a lot of information that can, can easily, easily be, be uh, remembered. Um, what next? Um, I think the recommendation engine, uh, which is also one of the key components, and uh, it is mainly, um, for it, it's mainly used the machine learning classifications and clustering algorithms. Um, we can see it as the way of analyzing metadata um, in a more in-depth manner, um, so that we can actually infer more metadata from the existing metadata. Um, it is used for making recommendations about um, how to process uh, the current data. It is about discovering even more relationships between various data items. Um, and it gives us some suggestions on how the data could be transformed. Um, it performs data classifications, of course, and uh, there, are, there are different data quality rules applied for the data. Uh, it is also uh, one of the key components that is used to detect anomalies in data structures um, and, uh, and can provide them uh, in a glance, at a glance. Um, some data fabric products that are already available in the market, I think uh, the, the, main, uh, the main ones would be uh, provided by Informatica. Uh, for example, Informatica Intelligent Data Fabric or IBM. Uh, Cloud Park for data. I think these are the the main the main ones which are known. Uh, but there are also products uh, coming from the Nodal, Talent, uh, Cloudera, and NetApp, for example. Uh, but it seems uh, that um, in the in the in the last months, uh, a lot of other companies have been establishing their own data fabric product. Um, so uh, it is actually predicted that the market will only grow uh, in this regard. Um, and now, um, last but not least, um, I wanted to describe a little bit the concept of data mesh as well um, to be able to actually distinguish both. Both. Um, we can start with the uh, with the term provided by Gartner. Um, so according to Gartner, data mesh is uh, some sort of cultural and organizational shift for data management. Um, and focuses on um, federation technology, but emphasizes the authority of localized data management. So we can say that data ma ma mesh, um, uh, indifferent to, to data fabric, is not centralized, not a centralized uh, way of providing data management, but more on a local level. Um, and uh, it is primarily intended to enable easy access data, to easy, easily access data by the business. Um, same as data fabric, but uh, where's the where's the difference? Um, data data assets are analyzed for usage uh, by um, subject matter experts, and those subject matter experts are mainly focused on specific data domains. 
um, we can call those data assets uh, as data domains. So they're, they're organized as data domains, um, as thematical groups, so to say. Um, and they can also be contextualized with business context descriptions. Um, those uh, different patterns uh, identified in, in the data coming from different data domains are further um, defined to create so-called data products. Um, I will talk a little bit more on that uh, based on a specific example, uh, but what could be the main characteristics of data meshed? Um, in comparison to data fabric, is it's a decentralized approach to data architecture. Um, it is very domain oriented, so we can view it as more related to data catalogs themselves. Um, so, for example, when we talk about data coming from different data domains, we can we can already name the domains themselves. For example, marketing, sales, customer service. Um, it is focused on producing a final product, uh, which would be a data product that can be easily shared with other team members in a company. Um, and uh, yeah, it is also an architectural parad parad paradigm. Uh, that aims to address uh, the different challenges uh, that are associated with data management, but uh, indifferent to, to data fabric at a local scale. Um, the main benefits of data mesh, um, I talked about domain-driven uh, approach, uh, but with that, uh, there's also the data ownership association. So we can say that um, instead of talking about a centralized way of providing the data, it is more um, associated with different subject matter experts, uh, associated with just the data, different data domains. Um, and by decentralizing those responsibilities, Data Mesh would allow organizations to scale efficiently because, of course, with those limited uh, data cataloging, data domain, a driven approach, uh, it is easier to, on one hand side, manage the data, on, side, on the other hand, uh, distribute the data also. Um, data democratization, so it empowers those domain experts to make uh, data-driven decisions without relying on a centralized data team. So I would assume the processes are also quicker and improved in that way. Um, the reduced data silos, so uh, the data products as end results uh, of this data governance uh, can be easily shared uh, across the entire organization and uh, faster time to insights. So within the main teams taking charge of data, uh, we are talking about a quicker turnaround time. Um, and a real world example, um, just to be able to, uh, to, to, to to ingest this concept. Uh, so let's take an example of a financial services company, uh, which, uh, which, which products and services are um, banking, uh, lending, investment management, and insurance. And uh, the data management challenges they would have is a growing volume of data, of course, uh, complex data processing needs, and uh, the need to meet regulatory, regulatory compliance. And how would they tackle this problem with uh, data mesh? Uh, so step one, uh, they would try to identify the key domains uh, based on their core business functions. Um, as example, we can say um, they will distribute it into five, six different areas, um, banking operations, loan management, investment portfolio, but also customer relations and risk management. Uh, in step two, uh, and three, uh, step two, dedicated data team. Uh, so they would um, uh, select subject matter experts and dedicated data teams that would uh, just take care of those specific domains. Um, and for example, uh, the domain team uh, associated with the banking operations uh, domain would take care of such themes as customer transactions, account balances, or branch operations where loan management team uh, would only take uh, into account loan applications, approvals, or repayment data. Uh, in step three, uh, data handled as data products would be offered to other teams in the company. 
Uh, for example, risk management team would develop data products such as fraud detection API, credit scoring model, market risk analysis dashboard, or maybe other. Uh, and then uh, in step four, uh, we would define some specifics um, of the data product, such as schemas, uh, quality standards, or usage guidelines. Uh, to that, we also would need to specify the different attribute groups. Uh, for example, investment portfolio, we would include attributes like asset types, market values, and historical returns. Uh, in step five, we would provide data through standardized APIs, uh, so to any, any team that would require it. Um, and in step six, we would like to build uh, our own data infrastructure. And this is also one of the key difference between data fabric and data mesh that um, for a specific data domain, uh, each team that manages it can actually come up with its own data infrastructure. Um, that would work best with the data they uh, they care they care for. Um, so, for example, the customer relations domain team may utilize Apache Kafka for real time data streams, where risk management uh, team would set up cloud based data lakes and data warehouses for storage analysis. Right, so they can be kept uh, independent. Um, and as a final step uh, for, for data mesh, uh, we would be talking about building a centralized data catalog, um, which we can call, let's say, one-stop repository for all the available data products, where data products are our thematical data groups. And, and thus, we can enable different domain teams to discover and consume each other's data. Uh, but also implement uh, the data validation checks, data lineage tracking, and data monitoring on the data that comes from the data catalog. Um, yeah, this was actually uh, the final slide. Um, so I hope uh, you've enjoyed the presentation. Um, is there any questions maybe around data fabric or data mesh?